call the meeting to order. This is the commission meeting of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. My name is William Brown. I'm the current chairman. Uh, it is Friday, January 18th, 2013. Uh, at this time, we'll stand and have the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and, and share in this business. We thank you for this state, the state of Tennessee, for the agency and for all these commissioners for devoting their time and energy for the accomplishments that have been attained by the agency and for what they do for the members and residents of this state. Pray that you will give us guidance and wisdom in making the decisions that we have to make today and in the coming year. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Barber, would you call the roll, please? Jim Bledsoe? Here. William Brown? Here. Harold Cannon? Here. Bill Cox? Here. Jeff Griggs? Here. Jeff McMillan? Here. Tom Rice? Here. Jim Ripley? Julie Schuster? Here. Clayton Stout? James Stroud? Here. Trey Teague? Here. Jamie Woodson? Thank you. Uh, this time I want to see if there's any discussion regarding the minutes from the meeting last month. <clears throat> All right, if there's no discussion, do I have a motion that the minutes be approved? A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right. Uh, if there's members of the audience today that uh, want to make comments to the commission, I'll ask you to come up at the time the subject matter is being discussed uh, about which you are here. Come to the center of the room, to the microphone, state your name and the purpose of your uh, addressing the commission. And we will be glad to entertain any comments that you have. I reserve the right to limit the, con the comments and we'll try to hopefully avoid any repetition. Uh, if there's several people here for the same cause, then try to have one or two people address the commission. Uh, is the sign-up sheet here? I forgot to mention that. Yes, yes sir, we have one guest, Mr. Crabtree, so far. Beg your pardon? We just have one guest today, Mr. Crabtree. Okay, all right. Well, I, I unfortunately forgot to mention that. I don't know if y'all passed that around yesterday or not. We had several guests, but uh, okay, that's good. All right, if there's nothing further at this time, we'll go to retention and recruitment with Commissioner Schuster. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Um, the uh, commission recognizes Commissioner Harold Cannon. This is different, isn't it? Oh. I always feel that uh, this way of introduction on um, things like this, there's, there's usually a story behind it. And I owe you all my story. And uh, keeping in mind that if this goes forward, if you think it's worth pursuing, um, this isn't Harold Cannon's deal, okay? This, my hope is that this will be the commission's deal and the commission locking arms with staff. Um, and frankly, locking arms with the people we serve folks who use the resources that we've been given the privilege to watch over. Y'all know I'm an engineer and uh, there's a tendency in me probably to a fault to want to fix things. In fact, if somebody tells me that we're not sure this can be done, that's kind of a challenge and I start smiling, much to my wife's chagrin. So they give me 24 hours. That's our nature. About a year ago this time, uh, Angie and I went out to California, flew into Sacramento, grandchildren are out there. And we land, you pull up to the gate, everybody's about to get out of their seat. And, uh, and if I make it through this, you'll have to, it'll be 
the first time. Captain comes on. And you could tell his voice is breaking up, and he'd ask all of us to keep our seat. And there was an Air Force officer in first class uh, escorting one of our fallen officers back home. He's breaking up. I'm obviously breaking up because I'm still doing it. Everybody in the plane is quiet. And the honor that soldier was given was remarkable. You walk into the gate, and Normally it's, it's busy. I mean, Sacramento for Pete's sake. It's a great airport, but it's busy like any other. You could have heard a pin drop. And everybody honored that soldier. And the thing that kept hitting me personally is I can't do a thing about this. I can't fix this one at all. This isn't the way it was meant to be. And if this seems a little disjointed, hopefully I'll bring it full circle here in just a minute. Uh, which leads up to my daughter who competes for CrossFit, which uh, obviously she didn't get her physical abilities from me. But one of the things they do annually is they do a fundraiser for the wounded warriors. They call it Fight Gone Bad. And she would tell you, and she showed me videos of some of our warriors who may not have legs, who are going through these workouts. And she said, you know, Dad, the, about the time you're wore out, and these things are intense, that you see this warrior getting it. Nothing's going to stop him. And you say, you can't stop. You can't stop. That had an impact. Uh, frankly, which leads us up to October, the commission meeting that we had at Real Foot Lake. And let me stop there for just a minute, and I think Don's got a video, a portion of that, that I want you all to see. And then we're going to take this a little further. Thank you, Director Carter and Commission. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Shane Hall back here. Shane, if you can come up for just a second. He's going to talk with you about some of the things that we have going on in uh, Region 1, Adam West, the statewide. He is the statewide coordinator for the Wheeling Sportsman. And without their partnership, we would not be able to do a lot of things. We can bring a lot of things to the table when we have events, and he can too. And the only way we can get these done is we have these partnerships. and. And as you saw yesterday, the demonstration we did in the duck blind, uh, you just don't think about it. And, and Shane has put a lot of effort in and it with Jeff and their crew about, you know, what we need to look for when we're setting up events for them on our WMAs as well as uh, private and public events. So Shane has opened our eyes a lot and we appreciate all his hard work. Shane. Again, my name is Shane Hall. I'm with the the uh, NWTF, I'm with the uh, Wheeling Sportsman Program, which is an outreach program for disabled children and adults with disabilities. Uh, we also do a tremendous lot of um, hunts and uh, just uh, more of a therapeutic um, type outsource to our wounded soldiers. Um, let me give you a little background on myself. Uh, 23 years ago, uh, I was 18 years old and I fell 27 feet backwards off a bridge, which paralyzed me uh, pretty much from my waist down. Um, over the years, it, uh, I kind of give up on life, and um, just one day out of the blue, somebody said, you can't play golf. Well, why can't I play golf, you know? So um, I came up with a solution to play golf. I could sit down on a stool, and I could drive the ball. I could chip the ball. I could do whatever I wanted to do. Well, I, it, it took me about a month and a half, and ladies and gentlemen, I can now play golf. I can drive the ball about 250 yards. So, but it was just because someone told me I couldn't. And that's a lot of the reason why the, over the 14 years I've been uh, over this program and been doing this program all across the state of Tennessee, uh, Alabama, and Mississippi. Um, first off, thank you all for letting me speak. I appreciate it uh, very much. Lance Ryder, Jeff Martin, uh, all the regions, Director Carter, we do a lot with our soldiers. I want to start with that and let you know that we do a wounded soldier hunt every year um, in Milan, Tennessee. The Army has opened up the whole 22,500 acres of ground to us for three days of hunting, or two days of hunting, actually. Um, last year, or uh, the first year, we harvested 10 birds, uh, 14 soldiers. Last year, we had 16 soldiers, 17 soldiers. We harvested 10 birds. 
This year, uh, we now have on board 21 soldiers with all types of disabilities, some with PTSD, some with loss of limb, uh, shrapnel in their bodies, um, so on and so forth. This is a therapeutic program for these soldiers. Um, it turns out that these soldiers um, don't know much of a life when they come back into the States. All they think about is the war. They think about what they've been through, what they've seen. Um, but to get them out into an atmosphere of duck hunting, deer hunting, turkey hunting, fishing, whatever it may be, um, that's therapeutic for them. You take three days or four days of their life and you put them in a duck blind and the last day of the hunt they come up and they shake your hand and they tell you how much you've changed their life, how much you've helped them for those three or four days. There's no amount of money in the world that I would take for that very moment. That's, uh, that's worth it all. We do a duck hunt every year. Uh, we've been doing two. We do a wheeling sportsman hunt where we do eight to 10 disabled children, men, women, whatever, confined to wheelchairs. That duck hunt consists of quite a few people it takes to help to get in and out of the blind. Um, TWRA is a big asset to that. They help us uh, bring them in, get them in the blind, and once they're in the blind, they can pretty much do for themselves. But they, they don't have to. They're weighted on hand and foot. These people realize that this hunt is for them. It's all about them. It's not about anyone else. It's the I can that I can, I can do this. Uh, the state of Tennessee is, is known, and I'm very proud of this, for our outreach programs. Our outreach programs are, in my opinion, of course I'm biased, but class A number one program. So we do duck blind, or deer blinds and turkey blinds uh, on some of these WMAs. <coughs> right now I have, a, um, I, have, I have three blind sites. I have two blinds that are officially together and have been up for the past two years. One of those blinds is at the Bogota WMA um, down in a little community. Some of you may know Bogota, Tennessee. Um, I don't know how many acres that land is, but it's a very nice blind. They can drive right up to the blind where they have a handicap lift on their van, truck, whatever, and it sets right down on a concrete slab and they roll 50 feet up a ramp, concrete ramp, open up, uh, the door is five foot wide. They're able to roll in, shut the door behind them, and it's, I mean, they can slide the windows open and, and deer hunt and turkey hunt. We have food plots planted out in front of them, um, and it's just very handicap accessible. We have another one at uh, Moss Island, uh, which is in southern Dyer County, close to the Lauderdale County line. Uh, we have another site in Bogota that right now the concrete work is done. All this material has been donated. None of this has come out of the pocket of, of, of anyone, actually, but donation, you know, and crews have come down and worked on it. We now have a new blind that's fixed to be set up there within the next two weeks. The blind is built. It just has to be transported down and set down and anchored down to it. But I'd like to challenge our, our commissioners and our, our WMA um, managers that at least let's put one handicap accessible deer and turkey blind on a WMA throughout the state. I think it would be um, a great experience for disabled children to be able to get out and hunt when they when no one says that they could do this. I think it would be great for someone of a family man that has had an accident or a mom that says, you know, I used to hunt and fish, but I can't do it anymore. Well, we make that possible. There is no I can't. There is I can. And I'm that person to help set them up to do this. There's uh, many, many ways of doing it, and there's enough people that have a good heart about them that want to help these children and these adults with disabilities to hunt and fish. So uh, again, I want to thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them for you. We'll need your help again. When Jamie and I were in the blind <laughs> shooting, and by the way, she is a heck of a shot. Um, there was a story of one of the folks who uses that blind, who's a quadriplegic, whose shotgun is mounted on a pedestal of pivots and they have enough movement in their shoulder to move the shotgun and they blow into a straw to fire the gun. They are out there. Um, that's when it hit. He says, we can do something. I think we can take Shane up on his challenge. And my intent here today is to put some formality, if you will, or ask for permission 
uh, for all of us to put some formality to this. Um, my office staff has been great. They put up with a lot from me, and they and Michelle Ma uh, Maddox helped come up with this. I don't know if this is where you want to go, but this gave me something to talk off of. Basically, what I'm proposing that we do is that let's create a moment of freedom for these folks who don't have the mobility that we do. I may not be able to do anything about that soldier who's lost their life, but we can sure do something for that soldier who walked right beside them and may be disabled and give them the opportunity that, quite frankly, I take for granted too much. Case in point, the moment of freedom. That's where the name came from. That's our TWRA logo. Uh, you'll see TW, TFWC, TWRF, TWRA, and I'll get into that in just a minute. And basically what it is is a three-year project, and there's a line that says sites there with a box above it that doesn't have any number in it. That's for your all's help as to what we want to do here. Mission statement is simply this, providing a moment of freedom in the outdoors for our disabled men, women, and children. Not only our warriors, whether men or women, but also the kids of this state and the surrounding states. I found for myself I have to set aside a block of time and have some goals for that block of time, otherwise I'm gonna crash and burn. And so this is simply this, this is the vision. It's a three-year project dedicated to creating, is it 12 handicapped blinds, one per region per year? Is it two per region per year? What will that number be? That's your call. Across the state by March 2016. We would be constructing these on DWRE managed properties, whether our WMAs or otherwise, for hunting, for fishing, could be for archery or shooting opportunities, or quite frankly, Jeff McMillan gave me a, an experience last year uh, out in Arkansas where we went out to an area, he has a platform out there, and we don't hunt or anything. That afternoon we watched the birds come in. I think there's some folks who would just love that opportunity. They don't necessarily want to do the hunting, but just be outside and have that true moment of freedom maybe they thought they'd never have again. The construction of this, uh, make it real clear, I have no intent of adding more burden to our staff. Uh, we're going to need their help to some degree. But the construction, what we would do is we would follow the Habitat for Humanity model, that basically there would be volunteers who would construct these blinds. They'd be pre-designed. Dwight would approve them. The materials would be purchased or donate, donated outside our fiscal budget. We'll get into that in just a second. The donations are going to be directed through the Wildlife Resource Foundation. That gives the opportunity for any monies to be de that the agency would use to be designated for this project. Again, if you choose to go forward with it. I believe, it, Ed, and correct me if I'm wrong, materials can be di donated directly to the agency for this purpose. This is where you come in, and that is the commissioners in a region working with that regional staff would set up what the priority projects would be. Uh, and my hope, my dream on this is, is that we're going to be out there driving some nails, doing some planning, doing the food plots ourselves alongside our staff, alongside the hunter fishermen. Who knows? There may be a senator or representative that we've locked horns with. They might even be out there beside us. You never know. The overview, excluding year one, all facilities will be constructed using volunteer labor, labor with the materials purchased or donated. We're not gonna begin anything on any of these unless the funds or materials are in hand. We mentioned a minute ago that any donations would go through the foundation. Our intent is not to take away from Wounded Warrior or some of these other great, great outreaches, but that this, we would strongly encourage that this be above and beyond what folks are giving to those groups. You see a 7% number here set aside for administrative cost. Um, that's a fact of life. And anytime you have nonprofit or anything, there's some administrative cost there. I don't know if seven's right or not, but I guess through this, I want us to acknowledge that there needs to be some help that we would have to give the foundation to allow them to take care of these monies for us. 
Item D, I'll tell you it's part of a dream, and that is the donations of volunteers, grants, whatever will be recognized as part of a project website. My hope is that, uh, at least my thoughts right now, and this is the dream part, and you all help put the vision together, is that everybody's equal. If Amazon gives $10,000 and Tim Anderson, who's six years old, gives five, they're going to be on the same list. It's not a matter who gives how much. Everybody's equal. Or if they're only able to give their time, everybody is listed the same. This isn't a naming opportunity for any corporate venture, but it puts everybody at the same level. Approval prototype and, and specific plans, uh, that would be through our folks. Post-construction maintenance, every year preparing, if you will, this site, that would be with volunteers as well. Bottom line, and, and Daryl said this the other day when I was meeting with a few of the staff, whatever the facility, we've got to do our best to create a positive experience for the users. That means this needs to be on skids or whatever, but the focus is on the users and that experience for them. Year one, I won't read through all of this, but basically the intent is that these facilities, whether it's a duck blind, whether it's something for deer or turkey, whether it's even a platform to hunt dove from, that the construction of that would be completed through donations a la dollars or materials. Year one, we're probably going to need some help creating access out there. And there's a chance asking Dwight and his staff or the WMA staff to do that may require some additional dollars. If that's required and if you choose to go forward with this, I'm going to honor what I challenged some folks with yesterday. In March, the intent is to bring back a plan that tells you exactly what that would be. But that would be for year one only. Um, and this is more than just building the structure. It is preparing the grounds. Each one of us saw what our staff has done a phenomenal job at. It's, uh, the blind we shot out of is a duck hunter's dream. And that's the way these places ought to be for our friends who are going to use them. It'd be a one weekend deal, and my hope would be that we'd have it done by mid-August in time for dove season and some of the other things that would be happening. Years two and three would basically look like this. Between January and March, we would work together to identify what sites were going to be constructed in that specific year. Uh, there would be a weekend picked. All volunteers, again, we'd be shooting for that August 15 date. Uh, after year one, the access to these sites would be a part of the project cost. And again, my hope is that maybe there's grading contractors out there who says, I'll have a dozer there. You know, I'll take care of the access. Or maybe we get the monies to where we can reimburse the agency for their time in that effort. Um, again, I emphasize all of this would be approved by our staff. Uh, they're living with it. It's on their WMAs. Dwight's overseeing it. This is not something that would be done very loosely at all. The request of you all is simply this. Uh, I'm not going to ask you the question, what would make you not vote against this? You know, I think I've heard that sometimes uh, past session. Um, I guess I'm asking for your blessing and your consent that this is something that you would be interested in pursuing. Uh, and if you give that consent and blessing, then our intent would be to, all of our intent would be to develop this plan, take it from the vision point, and literally have a three-year plan that would be formally presented at the March meeting. Uh, this isn't a matter of just blessing or consent from you all. It means participation. It means hands-on. It means getting with our staff. And I know you all have a lot of things that you, every day, doing this is, is taking away from your work. Um, this was one of those things I think Shane gave us a good challenge, and I want to emphasize we're not starting a new program by any means. What we are doing is this is basically having an intentional plan to begin to establish some of these facilities on our WMAs. And my hope is that it will give us some interaction with our staff and with each other, aside from voting on some sometimes tough issues that, uh, you know, in August of this year, we're going to begin to see some of the fruits of our labor. Uh, that's it. I'll take any questions, and uh, 
and any thoughts? Thank you, Commissioner Cannon. Um, I'll open it up to any questions or comments, but um, this is really a, a great project, I think, for, for all of us to get involved in and show how much we really do care. It's just putting our, taking our words and putting them on the ground and, and making it uh, a reality. And I just appreciate your thoroughness and, and uh, laying it all out for us very easily, and I appreciate that. And uh, it's really exciting to see us moving forward on this. So I just want to open it up to comments on the commission or questions. Um, I'll start it. I think, uh, I think it's a great project. I wish I'd have thought of it. But, uh, and obviously, if it takes a motion, I'll make it. But I, th I, I don't have a problem funding or offering matching funds or stimulating donors with matching funds or whatever for a project like this. I think this is, this is, this is outstanding, and our guys can identify areas and you know, there's equipment that they probably already have access in some of the places. I was thinking about, Jim, I was thinking about Wolf River and places that might already have access you get to pretty easily. But I think it's a great program, and I, I think we ought to do it. Thank you. talking about the wounded wounded warriors um, have you talked to them about that is it would it be something that might be make it even better oh I think we would I didn't want to go too far quite frankly um, this was something Angie and I you know just because of what we do whatever we could offer maybe it's a line in a computer or something but we wanted to be about this but the more I thought about it um, I think I know your all's hearts uh, pretty darn well, and that's a treat. And uh, again, I don't want to put a burden on you all or the agency. If we go forward with this, and we would talk with them, we would most definitely talk with them. And quite frankly, the year one projects, I want them to be simple. And what I mean by that is we don't need to make something monumental that feels like it's a mountain we're crossing that first year. But at the same time, you know, what Daryl said, wherever he is there, you know, we, at the end of that, whatever we've created needs to be a neat experience. John and I have talked. We've talked a little bit about uh, we've got Lick Creek that hopefully we're going to get to have a commission meeting at in the near future. And they're still under construction. That might be a real easy way to put its first blind up there with the forks of the river. It's awfully flat where some of the dove fields are. I watched a great dove hunt for the public this past year. Things like that, you know, keep it simple. Uh, we're gonna learn, we're gonna make some mistakes the first year, but uh, uh, we would talk with them, sir. Long answer to say yes, sir, we would talk with them. I, I mean, I would think that there are gonna be some months this year that I don't think the commission will meet formally, and I think that'd be a great month that we could meet informally, and I've, I've got a lot of tools. I've built a cabin, and I'm saying I could certainly bring the resources that we could get the plan. I'm sure we could be pretty easy to build a couple of blinds in a weekend. So I think that'd be a great experience for us. So I'm all for it. Well, I'm for it, Harold. I appreciate you going to the trouble of, of uh, putting this together, not only the idea, but a, a plan to follow rather than just being out uh, going about it and putting it together piecemeal. I think it's, uh, it's a good plan. I think everybody's in favor of doing it. Well, I have a motion. Uh, Commissioner Cox has made a motion uh, that we approve the request to uh, uh, go forward with this to have a formal plan developed by March 22nd. And I assume that's going to be, uh, Harold, you're working with the agency to come up with this. And, have and you all. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, at this time we will go to Voting Law Enforcement Committee, Commissioner Cannon. The committee recognizes Steve Nifong. 
regarding Proclamation 13-01. Yesterday I gave you the recommendations for the staff on moving forward and changing our tagging procedures for big game animals. Uh, if you want to put it back up, I'll get somebody to do it. Otherwise, it's the language in your thing. By the end of the calendar day of harvest, all big game animals shall be checked in and an approved TWA checking station on the TWA website <clears throat> or by the TWA mobile application. Evidence of the big game animals, species, and sex must be available for inspection by TWA personnel until the animal is checked in. All big game animals taken to taxidermists or to meat processors must be accompanied by documentation on approved TWA forms or TWA mobile applications. If it so pleases the commission to move in this direction, I'd ask that you change the language on our big game proclamation so it will be in effect uh, in time for the spring turkey season. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on this. Uh, yes. Should we have to make a rule making change as we got further on into this? When will that come? Okay. This impacts the current taxidermy rule. The taxidermy rule says something to the effect that the taxidermist is required to record their big game license number that will no longer be appropriate and it will have to be changed to the confirmation number or whatever. Look, just a slightly different verbiage. There's a couple, two or three other things that we've identified over the years that we sort of need a house cleaning thing in the taxidermy rule anyway, but it will require that uh, to be totally correct for the taxidermist a little bit later on. But we realize that this is going to initiate some calls and confusion and whatever. The staff is already working on sending information out to license agents and media and whatever to try to limit that confusion as much as possible. We, we know that you know, there will we'll get a lot of questions this spring, but hopefully we will be able to educate a lot of people during the spring turkey season where everybody's sort of on the same page by the time our deer season rolls around next fall. Chief. Uh Commissioner Bledsoe's question. I'm assuming this rule change, I'm going to look at Daryl too, may come in the spring, uh, latter part of spring, before the commission. When we do you think that will? He's wondering when it's going to occur, and I, I guess I will. We will probably staff it at our next staff meeting and come to you with a request for the rule change very quickly so we can get it moving as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Chairman, uh, any other questions? Excuse me, I didn't want to jump the gun. The Boating and Law Enforcement Committee voted on Proclamation 1301, uh, which is in your packets. Uh, it was unanimous uh, to approve this, and on behalf of the committee, I recommend the commission's approval. Before we go to uh, budget committee, I want to ask uh, uh, Commissioner McMillan if he would to uh, give us some information on what uh, Bobby Wilson found out last night. Yeah. If you would, Bobby, brief us on uh, the meeting about the core meetings you attended, please. Yeah, I attended a meeting, uh, one of the four public meetings that the core is, uh, is putting on and uh, to to discuss, or I guess they're going to present their they presented their proposal to, to close access below the the dams and above the dams on all the core projects, basically the Cumberland River projects, and um, they've already had one in Kentucky. Uh, they were supposed to have one Tuesday night this past mm -hmm. Tuesday night, but it got canceled or postponed because of the weather. So they had one last night in Baxter, Tennessee, and uh, there were about 110 people there. Um, well represented by the T.D. Bray folks from Region 3 and, and, and Glenn Boats from the Boating Division. Um, most of the comments were from the public. They um, were, of course, in opposition to the proposal. And uh, someone brought up that there were 99.9% .9 of the people who fished below those dams and did not drown, that they were being penalized for uh, just a relatively few people that 
that have had accidents and so uh, just very few fatalities but uh, anyway the I won't go into all the details of it but the um, the Colonel DeLapp from the Corps who, who gave the presentation uh, it was more of a this is what we're going to do and uh, we just want to let you know what we're going to do and, and sort of define uh, the, the details of, of each individual closure below the dam, how far below the dam, the, clo the, the bar barricades will be set up and that kind of thing. Uh, there were also representatives from um, various congressional offices. Uh, I think there were from Senator uh, Lamar Alexander, Senator Corker, uh, uh, Diane Black, and then um, Scott Desjardins off office folks, representatives were there, as well as State Representative Terry Lynn Weaver was there present. Several county mayors were there, all expressing opposition uh, to this proposal, but um, at least last night, it didn't look like he was going to change his mind. So someone suggested that the, that the people there, I think one of the county mayors stood up and said everybody should, should contact their U.S. representative, either a senator or, or a congressman, to try to get something uh, something changed. So anyway, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, like I said, there were not, there was no one in favor of the proposal except for the, I think the core folks do this. But the next, the, uh, the meeting that was scheduled for Nashville uh, that was postponed is going to be February the 5th at McGavick Auditorium. And uh, on, I think from 6 to 8 p.m. I think it's a Tuesday night. So I'm sure there'll be lots of folks there too. Thank you for briefing us on that. It's scary to me to think that they close it below the dam and there's more drownings above the dam. I mean, they're going to take the issue to close it waters everywhere. I mean, it's just there's a risk when you're around water regardless. And that's just it's interesting to me that he can take that on and just. Yeah, people yeah. pointed that out. And then they also pointed out if they set these barricades up and somebody drowns below that, are they going to extend it down below that? And the colonel oh. said, no, it's just they, they've got these the hydraulic line below the dams. Uh, that they've been it's been determined by their engineers that's as far as they're going to go so. okay well uh, is there any questions for Bobby concerning this issue I, was he at was Colonel DeLay up there yeah he gave the presentation okay he was there and he answered all the questions there were uh, comments and questions till eight actually after eight o'clock they said they would take them till late but they uh, they found they stayed around till the very last person had a comment is the hydraulic line is that where the swiftest water starts to calm down so yes. to speak i think so okay is there any other questions um, an issue that we was brought up yesterday about the commercial fishing industry and i uh, i think the fishery committee would like to encourage you to tackle this asian carp changes that they um, were suggesting about the gill net size and the changing the times that they can net and all and I know they talked about it open something about extension on the Duck River but I'd, we'd like for you to um, between now and the next meeting in February come up with an agency recommendation so that we could expedite maybe help them that they can get busy this spring maybe we can vote on it in March okay if you would do that I, I think we'd like that I'll bring that back uh, get some input from our staff and and uh, try to come back with some kind of recommendation and so it'd be nice to be able to do s something to help fight this asian carp problem and it's nice to think that the commercial fish would be be the ones to help us so i think that'd be great um, the other thing is i know in the november meeting we talked about uh, 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 commissioner woodson said that she may have the uh, maybe access to some folks that could maybe do a study on the uh, I guess the economic impact of the river's uh, use. And uh, can you comment on that, if we can maybe get that rolling? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would actually be happy to work with staff and at least make the connections with the Center for Business and Economic Research and um, see if that's a partnership that's worth pursuing unless that's already happened. But I'd be more than happy to take that on as, as homework if that would be the commission's will. Okay. we've. We've started work on that a little bit, developing a list of, of things that we'd like to we'd like for someone to get answers to for us, including economics and how many guides are out there and opinions from the guides and that kind of thing. Just the questions we're, we're starting to develop those that we can give to somebody to answer for us. That's, that'd be great. Anyway, if it would be helpful, then I might uh, I can at least with my contacts over at the center at least get 
maybe the three of us on a call or, or whomever you might prefer, the director, or however you all would like to pursue that. But if it's the will of the group, I'm happy to engage or um, just follow y'all's y'all's desire on that. Just, I mean, can you maybe in February kind of brief us on the survey questions you've come up with and how we're going to handle that then? Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Bobby? Thank you. All right, we'll go to the Budget Committee, Commissioner Schuster. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Uh, the Commission recognizes Gordon Martin, Real Estate Specialist, Engineering Division. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'd like to give you an update to your real estate report that you have in your notebook. Uh, in Coffee County, <coughs> The Beavers track 200 acres. The survey is complete on that transaction and we're in the process of preparing a deed for the acquisition. Uh, moving on down to McNary County, we had a uh, 20 acre gift that a lady was uh, intending to give to us. Uh, we've had a, uh, the transaction has been canceled at the request of the treasurer. Uh, in Lake and Labine County, we're now working on the final draft of the lease of real foot land, 7,000 acres or so, to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The final draft is in progress on that. In uh, Van Buren County and in White County, we have, uh, we were going forward for acquisition of about 1,900 acres of land in these two counties and the uh, property owner had asked us to remove this from the SBC agendas. So we have removed that and we'll be rescheduling it in the future. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Would, would, you, would you mind explaining a little bit about this management lease for just fish and wildlife? What that's, we'll think about that. What is that? Well, this is a lease that uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has, uh, we've entered into it in 1941 and it had been modified in 1973. Basically it is a management lease of real foot lands owned by the state of Tennessee and under TWRA's jurisdiction. We're leasing it to them? We're leasing it to them, that's correct. And what do they do with it? They create, they create their, what is it, National Wildlife Refuge? That's a National Wildlife Yes, that is a National Wildlife Refuge. Anyone else? Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the Commission now recognizes Ken Tarkington, Chief Administrative Services. Thank you, Commissioner Schuster. There should be a two-page uh, financial report in your... Uh, Here. Uh, in your booklet, it's uh, we're reporting through the month of November 2012. At the top of the page, the uh, boating fund is identified, and it shows we're 28 and a half percent behind. Same point in time last year, and it may sound like a broken record, but as in the past, this is the way finance and administration records our revenue deposits. Uh, all of the funds are received in wildlife and then transfer the boating portion transferred to boating. The, a, a trend that we run account, which accounts for the actual boat registrations that were sold during that period and the actual licenses that were sold during that period uh, identify that the, the deficit is only 7%. Consequently, in the wildlife fund towards the middle of the page where we're showing a zero which is the same as we collected the year before, that's actually a 4% reduction. So uh, what, we're, what we're showing is a, a, a decline, but the decline is less than it was before, so it's good, if that makes any, any sense. And if you recall, on the, the license side, as well as boating, the majority of our boating revenue, the majority of our of our uh, license revenue comes in the 
in the spring and the, in the summer. On the wildlife side, uh, approximately 45% is going to be received in March and April, 55% March, April, and May. So uh, while the, the, the sales are down, uh, I still don't think there's any, any room for alarm. Uh, on the expense side for boating, we're at approximately 28% of the authorized allotment for the year. And on wildlife, uh, we're approximately 32% uh, execution of the budget. At the bottom of the page, the two endowments, uh, state calls and permanent funds, the uh, balance in the watchable account is uh, 5.6 million with available interest of approximately 14,000. Uh, and the uh, sportsman, lifetime sportsman endowment, uh, the balance is 33 million too. On the second page at the top um, is the acquisition, wetlands acquisition fund approximately 8.6 million in it. We zero the maintenance out as we usually do. And the compensation, which is in lieu of tax, uh, has approximately 373,000. Uh, traditionally, we receive the certification from the comptroller's office to pay that in lieu of tax in the main time frame, sometimes June time frame. Uh, any questions or comments? Thank you, Ken. Appreciate Thank you. it. Mr. Shoots, I've got a quick question. I don't know that it's a pen, but, mm -hmm. and I know this was discussed years ago, but um, somebody may or may not be able to answer the question today. What, why do we do an annual February the 28th renewal rather than doing a, an annual purchase date, expiration date, like Mississippi and some of the other states do? Is there, I can a, give is, you there a, is there a reason that we don't think we collect as much money? Because I think the people, December that might want to buy a license are going to wait after February or may not take the opportunity at all. So I just wonder if it's. Are you talking about and do it for a 12 month period? Yeah, or are you talking about June the 1st expires on you know, 12 months? We, we looked at that some years ago. We can always look at it again. If maybe I'm stealing some of the director's thunder. Okay, uh, at, at, that, at that particular point, it, it appeared that we, it would probably be uh, a loss of revenue. Yeah. Uh, the cycle begins in when the cycle begins in the March time frame for the hunting license, hunting and fishing licenses. That it there's a greater popularity for, and, and now I guess uh, I don't know that we have uh, turkey season. In, is turkey season after March? Yeah, I I, yeah. Um, but uh, the uh, fishing season it's it's somewhat in the middle. Uh, it would ultimately, uh, we thought we would have a decline in revenue. It can be changed. Well, I understand that. I don't understand why it would be a decline in revenue. But just wondering. I mean, I, a lot of other states do it on an annual 12 month chart. This, this is a topic of discussion a lot of times when the other states get together. Uh, of the states that have done it, there was a survey that sent out not too long ago. Some of them said they wish they had never done it, that they thought it was a very bad financial move for them. Some of the others said they were glad they did. And I assume part of that's depending on how it goes. In that particular state and what their funding mechanisms are, one of the other things is like our boating registrations. They're, they're a year from the date, one, two, or three years from the date that you make your registration. One of the things you have to follow up on on that to keep that loss out is to make sure that people are reminded when it's time to renew, which is an expense. So putting all those things together, the renewal reminders and the, and the number of people who forget that their license are expiring because they don't have a common expiration date, then those were some of the reasons for going into why it might be a revenue loser. And, and trying to think if it was North Carolina, I believe it was the last state that I know of. I may have to eat those words, but I believe North Carolina said they wish they had never done it because they felt like it had killed their revenue. I'll get you some more information on that, though. We'll, we'll be meeting again soon. I'll talk to those states that have done it. people ask me why we, why we didn't do that. How did multiple states? But if I had to boil it down, it would be for, because of the renewal thing and because people forget that they, their license are expiring. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Ken. Uh, moving on, Daryl Radijak, Chief of the Wildlife Division.
Thank you, Commissioner Schuster. Uh, yesterday, we humbly requested from the committee to expand the budget for the West Tennessee Wetlands Forestry Project uh, due to a clerical error. Uh, money did not get spent last year, and it was taken out of this, this year's budget. So in order for our forestry team to move forward and conduct the work that they anticipated conducting in West Tennessee this year, we request a budget expansion of $47,000. All right, Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee and I recommend passage of the West Tennessee Wetlands Forestry Budget Expansion. Second. Aye. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, the Commission recognizes David McKinney, Chief of Environmental Services. Thank you, Committee Chairman Schuster. Um, yesterday, we came to you with a request for the funding uh, we believe necessary to make the transition um, in putting the new spillway at real foot into operation. The Department of Transportation has completed construction of that project, and they are ready now to hand that over to the agency and the Fish and Wildlife Service for operation and then subsequently to take the old spillway and the, the old bridge out. Um, it, if, if I might say this, uh, we have been so focused on getting the component parts of this transition uh, in place that my failure to bring you along as to why we're doing this and how we got here. I hope you'll accept my apology for that. But 20-some 20, 20 years of litigation and conflict, I didn't know to what extent we wanted to revisit all of that. But uh, our request is for the funding necessary to partner with the USGS, whose expertise in this field is unquestioned. It would give us a credible product, um, and we appreciate your consideration of that request. I know there may be some discussion on this, but I'm just going to uh, move forward um, with our recommendation from yesterday in the committee. And Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee, and I recommend passage of the Real Foot Lake Spillway Project budget expansion. Is there any discussion on the matter at this time? All right, do I hear a second? I'll, I'll start the discussion after you get a second. Please. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I said, I got, I'd like to discuss it after you get a second. All right, is there, have a second? All right, I have a second. Okay, then we're open for discussion at this time. Mr. Chairman, I've, this, uh, and I've discussed this with Director Carter, this really gives me heartburn uh, to spend a license of dollars for something that somebody else sh should have paid for, and it looks like we're getting, it's, it's um, everybody's walking away and leaving us with it. Not sure what the answer is. Uh, Commissioner Cannon and I discussed it a little bit this morning. You know, it, it may end up that we have to pay it. I prefer to, to table it till next month, but I don't know that I'm going to make that motion. I would ask Director Carter, and I talked to him about it, that there's a possibility he mentioned yesterday, or Mr. McKinney, that we might get Wallet Bro money to pay for 75% of it, and that we might, and as Commissioner Cannon and I discussed, maybe the next month when we go to the, uh, to the Capitol, we might uh, make some make an appointment with the governor and go talk to him about it to see if we can offset these costs because I think this is a poor way to spend license dollars and and uh, it, it, it appears that it would blindside the agency and the commission. So uh, with that request, that's all my comments. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, I would have to say amen to, Mr. to Commissioner Cox's comments. I don't like it. Uh, and David, I don't think you owe us an apology because I think you've been blindsided, staff has, and y'all have done a yeoman's job trying to make good stuff come out of this. So uh, from my perspective, no apologies needed. <coughs> I do, uh, do want to explain why I made the motion yesterday. 
That's what I was explaining to Commissioner Cox and I would to you, all of you. While I don't like us adding this budget amendment per se, I think it's a bad decision. I think it may be a little worse for us to be, for, to not make this decision today to go forward. If we delay it 30 days, we really do not know if we've had any success in having it added to the overall state budget until May. There would be some indication, but there would be no guarantees, and we've seen a lot of things happen in those few months periods on other subjects. That's number one. Uh, that being said, I do believe we have an obligation if this goes forward today. Each of us has an obligation to immediately begin to let our friends know on the Hill that this isn't right. It's a project that was funded by the State Assembly for TDOT. Uh, this should be equally funded. Oversight or whatever, it wasn't our oversight, but wherever that happens in material, it needs to be a part of that budget and they need to have a budget amendment. Um, in the same breath, by not acting on this, I'm concerned we will be perceived as holding up a $22 million project that we're gonna have to deal with anyway. Uh, under the worst case scenario, when uh, if all of our efforts are exhausted and, it, and we are unable to get the, the assembly to see our reasoning in this, uh, I don't like the use of our license dollars either. And my hope is that staff in this concurrent in this time, uh, just as you've begun by mentioning the other source of funds, let's see what alternatives we have. But I. I uh, I didn't like doing it yesterday, but I feel like that's where we've got to be. And uh, I continue to be there today, and we've got some work ahead of us, assuming this passes today. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Let me, let me make a comment, and I, I totally agree with you. I think it gives all of us, as Commissioner Cox says, heartburn to come in here at this point in time. And, and Dave, let me echo uh, Commissioner Cannon's comment. You don't owe any apology. <coughs> You haven't overlooked anything. You hadn't blindsided the commission. I'm sure the commissioners will recall at the real foot meeting in October when we did the tour, we were told at that time that you all would be coming to the commission with a request for funds. I don't think anybody knew at that time just how much it would be. Uh, and maybe it's the number that's a little bit shocking but from what you told us yesterday, uh, hopefully there's some excess in this number that it won't actually cost this much. But be that as it may, it's got to be done. I think the key to this, like Commissioner um, Cannon said, uh, if we don't go forward with this, uh, then we're going to be viewed as the, as the entity holding up a $22 million project. Uh, which is not going to sit well with anybody. It's certainly not going to uh, endear us to the legislature or improve our position when we go and ask for some of this or all of this funding back, which I definitely think we should do. Uh, my opinion, if we postpone this, I, I don't think there's anything to be gained by not taking the vote today. If we went to the legislature, we went to the governor, whomever, uh, you know, we're not going to get a firm commitment. We can't at this point in time. We all know how this works. There, we will never know whether this money's coming back until the budget's approved, and that's probably going to be in May. Uh, we, we can get a lot of well wishes, and yeah, we want to help you, and we'll certainly consider that. And that's basically all we can get next month or any other time as far as that's concerned. I do think we should put forth the efforts and contact anybody and everybody that uh, could be of help and, and try to get, uh, get some of this money or all this money refunded to us. But I definitely think we need to go forward with this project uh, today and uh, uh, get this in line and then move on trying to get the reimbursements. Uh, that's just my comments. Commissioner. 
thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members, and I, I agree with the Chairman's comments as far as the, the appropriate next steps for the Commission. That, that feels like a comfortable move for me and feels like the right thing to do. I, I would say that while we all have, um, I think, very strong feelings about this issue, I might suggest a more intentional approach about our communications informal or formal with the governor or the legislature and and because Nat's not here um, it's certainly not my job to speak for him but I might propose that the director and Nat work together to put together perhaps some talking points for us and establish a very simple plan for us before we reach out to members of the General Assembly and really intentionally um, understand what we're asking for um, and articulate that in a way that that is productive and so I, if I might just suggest that regardless of what the decisions uh, uh, Commission makes today or next month or perhaps whenever but I would suggest that that before we even to our closest um, allies express strong feelings that we have an intentional strategy as a commission so thank you thank you I think that's an excellent suggestion uh, we don't want to just be shotgun in the matter we want to have a for the lack of a better word, a plan a re and to state a reason for why we think we're entitled to uh, this reimbursement. Any other comments? I'd like to make a suggestion based on that. I would think that we as would take, would ask for 30 minutes with the governor and ask Ed and Nat and the chairman and vice chairman and maybe the commissioner, whoever I guess would want to go with the commissioner that represents Real Foot or, the, or all 13 members to go to his office for whatever that number might be and let Ed present the history on it. I don't think we need to be doing that. I don't think we know enough about it. To your point, we right. don't. Director? Mr. Chairman, just, just before I walked down here this morning, either yesterday evening or this morning, a, a letter came from the Finance Committee in the House saying that we should have our budget prepared and be in front of that committee on February the 14th, which is obviously the next commission meeting day. So it's at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, what I'm asking is for y'all to consider, whichever way you vote today, really, uh, to give us some direction on whether or not we should bring that up as a part of our budget presentation, that it's a problem for us, or whatever you decide is the right time to go forward. That's, that's the House, not the Senate. So. It's only one side, but anyway, I thought the, t the timing on that was odd. Uh, that, so most likely, most of you will be here. And whether, usually in the past, we've had a, a commissioner or two that would sit in on our budget meetings, and uh, generally it's, it's staff that presents it to the committee. It may be appropriate at that time if, if the chairman of the committee wishes to allow uh, some kind of presentation or comments from, from other members that it would be a, a time since you're here for your confirmation hearings uh, and for the commission meeting to bring that up. I don't know if that's good timing or not, so I'll, I'll just let you all think on that, but I just wanted to mention that to you. Is that I didn't know that yesterday when we were meeting. Mr. Chairman, given that Commissioner Woodson heads up our government affairs, whatever the name of that committee is, and Commissioner Schuster, uh, oversees our budget committee. May I suggest, and not in the motion, but just may I suggest that maybe the two of them get together with Nat and Ed and come up with a strategy on how we approach this because I agree with Commissioner Woodson. Uh, we need to know the facts and any message to anyone that, that we get the opportunity to take this to, uh, it needs to be consistent. And uh, I think we're consistent in our position. I think we got a good general overview, as you said, Bill. Uh, I just I would appreciate their assistance in kind of outlining a game plan for us. I think that's a good idea, and I, I will formally ask Commissioner Woodson and Commissioner Schuster if you all will coordinate with uh, uh, Director Carter and, and Nat Johnson, and I leave it up to you all to involve anyone else that you feel would be beneficial in the process. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of uh, passing this motion for the $425,000 uh, 
Real Foot Lakeway Spill Spillway Project say aye. Aye. Opposed no. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, and this is just a quick follow up on, on the conversation. It can be part of the, the strategy, perhaps, that, that we do. But I know that the budget will be out at the, before the next meeting. And I wonder if there might be a short term strategy to at least visit prior to the, the at least the first shot at the budget that will be presented to the state of the state. So um, I'm, I'm ready to work with Commissioner Schuster and the director as early as they would like to. But if um, I think that time is some of the essence. Thank you. I think you're right. Thank you. Go ahead, David. Um, thank you very much. Ye yesterday, we visited a little bit about um, the Topoco project and the Tallahassee fund. This is uh, Alcoa's former hydroelectric projects on the Little Tennessee River. Through negotiations with Alcoa for a new license from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we were able to put about 6,000 acres of, of Topoco land in public ownership in the South Cherokee and in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park uh, and establish a Tallahassee fund which is a contribution uh, of about a hundred thousand dollars a year from Alcoa. Alcoa has has sold their hydroelectric project um, uh, to a company called Brookfield who has renamed it the Smoky Mountain Hydro Project. We will continue to receive funding into the, into the Tallahassee Fund. Currently, we had 125000 in the budget to accommodate those yearly contributions. We would like to expand that by $125,000 to make a total of $250,000 to allow the fund to accommodate um, and, and to collect to collect monies uh, to build up toward the purchase of the 4,000 acres that that is now available because of this sale. And uh, the commission's consideration of, of that request is, is appreciated. Thank you, David. Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee and I recommend passage of the, <clears throat> excuse me, Tallahassee Fund budget expansion. All right, I have a, a motion to approve the expansions. I have a second. Any, comp, uh, any discussion? All right, have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank Th you, David. Thank you. All right, the commission recognizes Director Ed Carter. Thank you, Chairman Schuster. This is a request for the budget expansion of $200,000 of all federal funds to complete a firing range in Carroll County, the remaining part of that, that budget being matched by the county itself, so 75-25 match. All right, thank you. Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee and I recommend passage of the Carroll County Range budget expansion. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion passes. Okay. Uh, is there any other business to come before the commission at this time? have a couple of announcements that I'd, I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, the commission wants to congratulate Barry Sanders on your uh, new position. I look forward to working with you. Appreciate your efforts. Uh, another thing that I wanted to make comment to the commission, in the past, uh, it has been the uh, policy, for the lack of a better word, that the commission hold the election of, of officers in conjunction with the time the appointments of May are made for new commissioners uh, coming on and those that have finished their terms uh, going off the commission. Uh, that has always been in March. Uh, it will be in March in the future. We got a little bit off of that schedule because of last year with the sunset provision and a new commission being created as of July the 1st. Uh, I've had the distinct privilege of serving in this position
for the last two years, basically, and uh, all good things need to come to an end. So uh, what I'm recommending or what I'm going to do is I, will, I would like to uh, uh, vacate this position as of February the 28th at midnight, I guess, so that we would get back on a schedule with uh, the upcoming appointments. I don't think there's going to be any this year, but in the future, so that the elections will coincide uh, with the appointments. Uh, and I don't know if uh, what Commissioner uh, McMillan or Commissioner Griggs, their thoughts on that are, but uh, I'd like to hear your all's comments and, and any comments from the commission. <clears throat> I, I, obviously, I think that's the correct move, and I don't know how to speak for Commissioner Griggs, but I will follow suit with uh, your recommendation as far as resigning on February 28th. I agree. All right. Any, any comments from other commissioners? Y'all afraid you'll get put in this position. That's why you're not saying it. <laughs> I think you've done a good job for two years. Well, we really, we really appreciate your leadership. You're very kind. I have thoroughly enjoyed it and appreciate the assistance from all the commissioners as well as the members of the agency it's been a tremendous help to me and, and it has been a very uh, distinct privilege for me so I appreciate that uh, I want to say though that the Commission has discussed it and if you didn't resign we were going to impeach you oh <laughs> <laughs> well I kind of had a premonition I guess that's what that was Okay, uh, in, in accordance with the way we've handled this in the past, I will appoint a nominating committee and ask this committee to meet, come back to the commission with uh, recommendations for officers at the February meeting. We will vote at that meeting uh, on who the new officers will be to take uh, their office effective March 1st. Is that right, Cheryl, that work? Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going, I'm going to ask um, the following persons if they would serve, if you want, tell me, and I'll be glad to it'd be like the Army. We'll call on somebody else to volunteer. I'm going to ask Commissioner Schuster, uh, Commissioner Cannon, and Commissioner Stroud, if you all would serve on the nominating committee and uh, come back to the commission next month with a recommendation uh, for candidates for these three offices. Anything else? Director, you have anything else to be taken up at this time? <coughs> yes, sir. Oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I know where you're going. Okay. I, I about forgot that. But you want to you make the comment? We're talking about trying to set some commission meetings as far into the future as we can to give everybody as much notice as possible. And... Uh, I know Director Carter had, uh, I guess it was during orientation that you gave us a, uh, is this the same list that you gave us or is it, this It's been updated? tweaked, been updated since then. Okay. okay. Uh, we, we are scheduled at this time to meet February 14th and 15th. Uh, we did that in conjunction with the NWTF annual convention. Also, uh, as we know, from Nat's comments yesterday, uh, it's likely that we will all be going through the confirmation on the either the 12th and 13th or the 12th or the 13th, depending on when those committees meet. Uh, that's not a final uh, etched in stone date, but he will let us know as soon as he knows. March uh, 22nd is the next was the next date would be the uh, that's a Friday uh, before we have a, a mix up again is that going to be a one day meeting or is that need to be two the the dates in there that we have which we call optional means that at this particular time we don't anticipate any having to have any commission action on that particular month okay so it was strictly up to the commissioners whether you meet or whether you have a one or two day meeting well, what I'd like to do, well, that'll be up to whoever the new chairman is, but we need to kind of plan in advance. Uh, 
why don't we schedule March 22nd with the understanding if that's not necessary we'll notify everybody in plenty of time and we will we will skip that month. Uh, the next two months are, are critical times for the commission because of the hunting regulations. Uh, there's been a request that we meet uh, April uh, April 18th and 19th. That would be one work one week earlier than this proposed schedule. But Daryl, is that a problem for you? Okay, and then if we meet, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Mr. Chairman, I sincerely apologize. That is a problem for me. I, this is one of the toughest things that I think, believe it or not, we, we can, we've got through one of the toughest issues on the real foot issue, uh, I think as well as anybody could, but for some reason calendar schedules, uh, it's, a, it's a trick, but that will definitely be a problem for me and I'm dedicated to being present at these meetings um, and I'm very supportive of, meeting if we need to meet but i would just strongly suggest if the commission does not have business to tend to that that perhaps not scheduling meetings um i i, I, I support the the decision to schedule it and if we don't need to meet but unless there is a good reason to meet and conduct state business i would suggest for the march meeting at least right, well, that we, we allow since we know the next two meetings are going to be two-day meetings um, and, and I don't know who, who made the suggestion to change the date. I just checked all these with the team a few days ago, so that the new April date won't work for me. It may work for everybody else, and that's fine. But um, this is a, the scheduling business is tough stuff. But I would just I would like to be at that important meeting because I know we've got a lot of se season right. setting to do, and and um, and I just would make a plea to the chairman and the commission for us to be very circumspect about this. Well, I appreciate your comments, and, and I'll take the blame for some of that. Let's do this. Let's back up. Let's do not schedule a March meeting at this time. You should be in a position in February to let us know if that would be necessary. Is that all right? Yes, sir. And if it is, it would be the 22nd. So if anybody wants to tentatively keep that date. Uh, did you want to have a comment? Which meeting were you having a problem with, Commissioner? Well, the, the March date I've got set because that's the date that they asked us mm -hmm. to set months ago. So I've got that set, but I, I would just suggest, and, and, I, and I, you'll forgive me, I'm speaking some for folks who aren't here because they've got work schedules that, you know, so there are other, if we don't have business to tend to, then I would just suggest we not meet, but it works for me. The 18th and 19th would not. I'm out of town and that wasn't on the tentative list. So. I just, if we, I've got it scheduled, I can be here in the March meeting. Um, I think other folks can, but I think just given the work, the private sector work life of commission members. It but, but I think the March meeting is he's just trying to pick a day. So in case something urgent comes up that right. we have to meet, yes, at least we have a meeting scheduled a date that everybody's thinking, well, if we meet yes, in March, then when and it uh, is. It's already locked down yeah. on at least my schedule okay. from the tentative list that they had. Okay. Um, Right, we're going to go back to 25th, right. 26th to right. accommodate, but, but my, we want to keep March 22nd uh, down yes. as a tentative right. meeting day. Yes. Right. And, Correct. And I, and I apologize, guys. I, <coughs> unless it is urgent, I just don't think it's necessary. That no, is my I, opinion. I but, think we I, all agree. We don't okay. want to incur expenses if it's not necessary. So March meeting is off at this time. There is no March meeting unless we're told in February there should be one, and if so, that would be the 22nd. We're April, we'll go back to the 25th and 26th. There's been two or three that have had conflicts with that 18th and 19th date. So we'll leave it at the 25th and 26th of April. May is 30th and 31st. Anybody else comments about that? I like okay. the May date. Huh? I like the May date. Okay. All right, and then, like I said, the, the new chairman uh, can do that. We're not scheduled July, or, I mean June or July, so that, that's, uh, that's good. August is, and September are always important meetings. Commissioner uh, McMillan. Director Carter, uh, on the pretense that the federal uh, Fish and Wildlife decide that um, that we can implement a 
Sand Hill Crane sees and if the commission so wishes to pursue that, would that not be a meeting in June to discuss? Is that when it would be coming about? I'm thinking May. Is I just, we, we my, I guess my thoughts are is that I know the hunting season is so involved. I'm not sure that we'd be able to tackle that also. So I'm just saying, I think we need to pick a June date that we would meet if so required. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to get everybody out in, in, the, in the future. So I'm just saying that we, it'd be nice to have a date that we were looking at if we do so have to meet. Well, I, th I understood Daryl to say you'd act we'd actually vote in August at the waterfowl. That, that's when the season would actually be set, but considering like, this being June time, I believe we'd want to get some advanced. You have to give public comments. We'd have to meet. Yeah, have to okay. okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We kind of touched on this a month or two ago about skipping months. And I understand the point about not spending money and not meeting and having all that, but when you go 60 days without gathering any information and keeping up with what's going on, it is very difficult to walk in and be and be attuned to what all of our issues are, and I think it's a bad idea to skip meetings because of that. That's my Okay, let's do this. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and set June 28th. Uh, right now we've got February 14th and 15th, March 22nd as a tentative date, if it's needed. April 25th and 26th, May 30th and 31st, and June 28th. And then we organize whoever can organize dates after that. <coughs> Anything further at this time, Bob? Well, just to clarify, um, just earlier we talked about bringing something forward about the Asian carp, uh, changing the regulations for commercial fishing, and possibly promote on in March. So we we'll would be postponing that until April. We'll bring up a recommendation in February, but let's be something. Yeah. We'll be voting on in April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and there was a request that we meet for the benefit of those people during the summer months. So we, we need to take that into consideration. They want to they they have the commercial fishing changes in September and not wait until the October. Uh, we could do that in August, but, but only give a 30 day uh, public comment period, or we could propose it in maybe in late June. I'm not sure if we can get it already by then if we pushed it. But we could also approve in March by phone conference if we decided not to come to Nashville, could we not? You could. Sure, we can always have a yeah, telephone call. It will count as a meeting uh, under the, the number of meetings you're allowed in a year, but yes, you could. Okay. Anything further? Thank you, everyone, for your contributions and what's been accomplished. And we will be adjourned till the February meeting.